So next we talk about Blast. Blast was originally developed in 1990 and actually used ungapped alignments. Unfortunately, ungapped alignments is not very useful because it only finds very similar sequences. So it was not really uh, uh, useful. But then in the 92 or something like that, it was updated and have you also can also use gap alignments, Blast 2 and uh, become much more useful. So it has um, uh, a few, it's based on similar ideas as fast day. However, it's a fundamental difference that it's not only use identical matches, it uses also sequences that are not perfectly matched. And then it uses another, instead of using a chaining of links, it uses what's called final state automata. And also, it actually uses a very good model for sequence statistics that enables to do that. So there, are, so it's as a result of this, it's actually seen it kind of faster than fast day, but also uh, in general, at least as accurate or even more accurate. So this is very very similar. You have a blast, you have a solid dot plot, and you do word lookup. So here you find words that are not, in this case not only identical, but the words that are significant, and you do that. And then you try to extend this, so basically you just try to extend it along the diagonals, and then you do local gap alignments. So it's very, very similar to fundamentals blast, but you can do that. So let's look a bit more into detail. Uh, key things here that it actually evaluates the results statistically, even this paired matches. Uh, and as I said before, it's, it's likely that the homologous sequences are likely to contain short. Ho ho uh, stretch of identical sequences, or even a short set of high-scoring word pairs, like they are really very similar sequences. And then it tries to extend this on the sides. So the first thing you're looking for finding this, so if you for instance want to find something that is similar to this PQG, you have they have a number of neighborhood words. So basically PQG is identical is, is very similar. However, PED is also similar and basically P and many other Central registers are very similar to Trull and Gleisens are, are conserved. So you define a neighborhood score threshold. So anything that has a blast substitution score or a blast substitution score or a PAM substitution score higher than a sort of cutoff. And its cutoff is based on statistical probability of finding false hits. Uh, will be included. So basically, you will look for any occurrences of any of these query words. So in this case, the only paths are, are low, uh, higher than 13. If you remember from the blossom matrix that we looked at before, the lowest identity matrix are in scores of 3 or 4. So that means that actually there could be even identical matches that have no hits. So for instance, maybe if you have adenine, 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 that's too, so frequent. So even that would not be significant enough to have any significant hits in even identical even if it was identical so you list uh, you create you, you, you neighborhood of words and then you list uh, uh, words of length certain lengths and you have uh, then a score and something secondly you send a database and uh, uh, you find all these uh, neighborhood lists and find a now you find identical matrices in the, 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 in the database of sequences using similar ideas as in FOSTE. One difference is that in general you, you, you're not using a single database, not a single sequence as in FOSTE, often it's a whole database. And so it's pre processed. You actually run a program before to pre process it to make it much faster. So here you use a hash table, similar as before. You find, okay, we have neighborhoods LAA and AAL and ALL, and you find all A, A, LAA is found in position 1, 5, 7, etc. And the data can almost be millions of residues long. Third, uh, uh, and then you try to extend these uh, ungapped alignments in both directions by just walking over the diagonal until you find, until the score cutoff drops below a sort of cutoff. 
And finally, you use you evaluate if this alignment is significant or not using the E value. This is something we just uh, we discuss later. So E value is the number of high uh, high scoring pairs that are having a score S or higher expected to occur only by chance. So this you can actually calculate analytically for ungapped alignment. For gapped alignment, you can approximate it. So in, for understanding the small E value, so that if this E value is one, that means that you would expect to find one of these randomly, but if it's 0 0.001, you would randomly only find one in a hundred trials. So that is also much more significant. If it's 10 to minus 50, you would you run to 10 to 50 pair trials before you find one such pair by randomly. If it's 10, you would find uh, 10 rand in, on average, you would find 10 in a random set database. So you want to have a low E value. Uh, so the E value is actually dependent on a number of factors, but what is important is it's some constants, and actually it's dependent on the score. But it's e to the minus this constant number of times the scores. But it's also dependent on n and m, so the, the, the length of clearance sequences. So if you have a bigger database, right, if the database becomes twice as big, you have to have uh, I mean you have twice as high chance to find a, a, a hit of that score. Or if the sequence rise is long. So really the E value depends on, on the probability to find score. And uh, you have uh, the probability to find one such high scoring pair is uh, is is actually what's called a P value, which is just one minus E to the power E. But in general for small numbers, P values and E values are basically identical. So this, all these things makes actually fast blasters generally much faster. This is old, old, old test. Then when it took 0.1 second to run blast, 0.6 second to run fast, day, then it's going to take 70 seconds. Today to run blast on a normal computer against the entire uniplot takes maybe five minutes, a few minutes. It's doable, but still it will be very, very consuming. It's not fast enough to run all blast sequences against uh, all uniplot against all, all other uniplot sequences. Because it's 50 million sequences. So, in summary, dynamic programming is the most sensitive, and it was all information in two sequences, but it's slow because it spends most of its time calculating uh, the data for non homologous regions, in particular, that's during a database because you only maybe have one hidden database, and the, all the other 50 million sequences are not related. So that's useless added to calculate. FASTA is less, less self programming, programming and actually less self than BLAST also. But it uses important information to speed up the computation. And the reason why it's less sensitive than BLAST is because it actually doesn't have a good statistical model. It does a randomization sequences and calculates on that. But it's much, much faster than design programming. BLAST is the method of choice today and it's used. Different versions are used, and extensions of to, to BLAST are used in almost every single bioinformatics application you're using. So it's really fundamental of bioinformatics. And one reason why it's so good is uh, because it evaluates the statistics very well, and another reason is because it actually uh, it, it means that you actually can know how likely it is that your result is correct. And also another practice here is that the database of false day is just a number of sequences that you put together, but it created you have a pre-computed database, which takes some time, but not that much time, and then it makes it align it much faster. Uh, so BLAST has a number of different programs. You can run for proteins, for nucleotides, compare nucleotide sequences, etc. So a number of different ways to run it. In principle, it's the same idea, but it's just that the cutoffs and the parameters and the substitution matrices are different. But you can fit run for instance blast X compared to nuclear sequence against that you that you translate in all reading frames, you make three sequences. And you run it against the protein sequence database. Uh, and you can actually do uh, so, so for in general because in general it's much better to compare protein sequences. So you can you run T blast X to compare six strong translation, you can do a protein protein alignment of all the possible proteins. Directly from the nucleotide sequences without having to worry about reading frames. 